So today's lesson from section 4.7 is going to be the quadratic formula. And like it says, the objective is we solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. We already learned that completing the square will solve every quadratic that there is. So why do we need another way to solve them? Well, sometimes by the time you take the MCAs and the ACTs, you've forgotten how to complete the square. So you always want a backup plan. So solving quadratic equations is what we've been doing this whole chapter. And this is just another way that we can solve. And the second part of this objective, we'll be doing that tomorrow, which is determine the number of solutions by using the discriminant. So here is the quadratic formula. And one of the easiest ways to learn and accidentally memorize the quadratic formula is by singing it to Pop Goes the Weasel's tune. So it's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Do that one more time. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Because we have to have it memorized when we take the test. So that's a really good mnemonic device, which mnemonic devices are just little songs, little poems, things that help you remember. So vocab and key concepts. When should we use the quadratic formula? Well, like I said, the last section said, hey, you can solve any of these by completing the square. But we did find out that completing the square can be more difficult when a is not equal to 1 because it produces fractions. So when a is not equal to 1, and we don't want to use completing the square. So when a is not equal to 1, and we don't want to use completing the square. Because completing the square works to solve any quadratic that's out there. Again, if there's fractions, it's a little tougher. So if we can eliminate the fractions, then completing the square becomes easy. But we need another method. You know, what if somebody really doesn't get fractions and they can't solve? Well, that doesn't mean they can't solve quadratics because we have other methods. Now, what do the answers to the quadratic formula have to do with the graph of the parabola? They are the zeros. And remember, on the graph, the zeros are the x-intercepts. So what we're really finding is more information about graphing quadratics. We can figure out where do they cross the x-axis. And then the next one says, what is the discriminant of the quadratic equation? The discriminant is the part of this that's underneath the radical. So here's our radical symbol. It's b squared minus 4ac. That's the part that is the discriminant. And what's the point of using or finding the discriminant of a quadratic function? We're going to get into that more tomorrow, because what it does is it tells us what type and how many solutions there are, or how many, let's say zeros, how many zeros there are. So the discriminant tells us what type and how many zeros there are. Because quadratics can cross the x-axis in two spots, but they could also bounce off at just one, or some of them never cross the x-axis. And so we want to know that. How many solutions should we be looking for as we're doing these? So that's just a little introduction on the vocab and the key concepts. But again, today is about that objective of let's solve using the quadratic formula. So how do you do it? Well, what are the solutions? Use the quadratic formula. When we factored, we wanted a 0 on one side first so we could see what was going on. 
When we did completing the square, we wanted a zero on one side so we could see what's going on. With quadratic formula, we have to have a zero on one side. So if it's 2x squared minus x equals 4, the first thing we do is subtract 4 from both sides and get it to be 2x squared minus x minus 4. The next thing we do is identify. Here's A, here's B, and here's C. And that's still talking about the standard form AX squared plus BX plus C. So in this one, A is 2, B is negative 1, and C is negative 4. So now that I know what A, B, and C are, now I have to put them into the quadratic formula. So of course, I want to sing the song so I can get the formula written down, and then I'll start substituting. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And there it is. So now, there are parts of this that we're either going to do in our head or simplify as we get past the first one, the second one, etc. But right now, what we want to do is write down all of it. So, question? Negative of negative 1 will be 1. Plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1, minus 4 times 2 times negative 4. All over. 2 times a, which is 2 times 2, which is 4. So again, you'll see there's parts of this that I did in my head when I was writing them down. I didn't write minus a negative 1. I just wrote 1. And instead of writing negative 1, the quantity squared, I just did negative 1 times negative 1 in my head. The rest of it, I would say you should save for a second step. And that second step would be, this is 1 minus what? So what we'd want to do is figure out negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 4 is plus 32. So this is going to be 1 plus 32 over 4. And then the last step would be, well, what is 1 plus 32? It's 33. And that's, that's going to be the last step, unless we can find a perfect square that divides nicely into 33. So you pull out your, your little uh, bookmark and you say, okay, um, 25, nope, that's not going in there. 16, nope. 9, nope. 4, nope. There's our answer right there. So how many zeros did it have? It had two. One of them is 1 plus the square root of 33 over 4. And the other one is 1 minus the square root of 33 over 4. So if we needed that answer as a decimal, we could certainly punch that into the calculator and figure out what it is. But again, what we're trying to do is find perfect answers. And so these would be two perfect answers in simplified form right there. Alrighty. B, what are the solutions? Use the quadratic formula. Well, let's see. Has a zero. So it's in standard form. Can somebody unmute and tell me what I should put in for A, B, and C, please? One, six, and nine. Mm-hmm. And then we sing the little song in our head. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And then we start doing some substitution, some of it in our noggin. So I'm definitely going to do the negative of B right away. Negative 6 plus or minus. I'm definitely going to do 6 squared in my head. 6 times 6 is 36. 
But I found that if students try to do this back part in their head, then they start making mistakes. So don't do that part in that first step. Four times one, which is A, times nine, which is C, and then two times one. Definitely can do that in your head. So this generally works. Now, if you're saying, Cedar Home, I'm going to lose some of that if I just don't write it all down, then write it all down, you know? But most people can do the negative, the squaring, and the multiplying by 2 without having to grab a calculator. Now, we need to see what's under that radical because radicals are like parentheses. You're supposed to do them first. Let's see. Minus 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 9 is negative 36. So that's going to be the square root of 36 minus 36. Oh, wait, that's 0. So this is going to be negative 6 plus or minus 0 over 2. But negative 6 plus 0 and negative 6 minus 0 is just negative 6. And you divide that by 2 and you get negative 3. Hey, I only got one answer. It can happen. Remember, this is going to be one where the parabola bounces off the x-axis. So this parabola is going to come down, and it's going to hit the x-axis, and it's going to bounce right back off, and it gets to count as two zeros. But that's our one answer right there. So quadratic formula. Why not use it all the time? Well, because it's memorizing. You know, the x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And it's much better to understand the process like we do with completing the square. But like I said, very few people remember the completing the square process by the time they take the spring MCAs and ACTs. All right, so let's give this one a try. What are the solutions? And that's probably in the glare, isn't it? Oh, rats. Well, hopefully you have your packet out there. So it says x squared plus 4x equals negative 4. We know we're not supposed to do that, so let's move the 4 over. And then let's identify a, b, and c. Somebody please unmute and give me a, b, and c. That's what it is. Thank you. And then we sing. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Negative got a little carried away there. Now, I will need negative 4 plus or minus 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16 minus 4 times 1 times 4, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Well, let's figure out what's under that radical. 4 times 1 is 4, times 4 is 16. Hey, that's going to be 0 again. And again, we realize adding and subtracting 0 isn't going to do anything. So this is really just negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. So this is another parabola that, if we graphed it, is going to come down and it's going to hit the x-axis and bounce off. So it gets to count as two answers. All right, that worked out a little too slick. Let's try this one. x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Oh, at least it equals 0 already for us. Somebody please unmute and give me my a, b, and c. 1, 4, and negative 3. Mm-hmm. And then you sing. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, I need a negative b. That will be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared, 16, minus 4 times 1 times negative 3. 
all over. 2 times 1 is 2. Now, let's just say you're thinking to yourself, Cedar Home, I'm going to mess up what's underneath that radical. If you put the negatives in parentheses, like I did right here with the negative 3, you could punch that in your calculator. 16 minus 4, parentheses 1, parentheses negative 3, enter. It'll get it for you. You can do that. You don't have to do that part in your head if you don't want to. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, times negative 3 is plus 12. So we get 16 plus 12, which is 28. Oh, we might be done, but we might not. That all depends on if anybody can find me a perfect square that divides into 28 nicely. Does anybody know one? Four and seven. It sure does. So we have to simplify that. That's part of simplifying our square roots. And then we know what the square root of 4 is. It's 2. And we still might not be done. I want you to look at the integer, integers in this, not the radical. Remember, we can work all with the integers or all with radicals if they're the same, but not mix and match. So what do you notice about negative 4, 2, and 2? It can be divided. It definitely can. So what we want to do is pull out a 2. Now here's the reason we want to do that. Canceling is a form of division. In order to divide, you have to see multiplication. And now that we factored that 2 out, we can see, yes, this was multiplied. And we have two perfect answers. We have negative 2 plus the square root of 7 and negative 2 minus the square root of 7. Which again, if we needed that as a decimal, then we'd do that. But most of the time we ask you to leave it just like that because that is two perfect, beautiful, simplified answers right there. Elegant math. Now. There's definitely a time when we want to know what that is as a decimal. And that's going to come whenever you do a word problem. And that's what's going on here. So applying the quadratic formula. Fundraising. Your school's jazz band is selling CDs as a fundraiser. Yeah, our school used to do that every once in a while. The total profit P depends on the amount X that your band charges for each CD. The equation P equals negative X squared plus 48X minus 300 models the profit of the fundraiser. What is the least amount in dollars you can charge for a CD to make a profit of $200? All right. Well, the first thing I have to know is, where does that 200 go? Ideas? The front, it's like the start of the equation. Exactly. P for profit, right here. that's the right look when you're going to use the quadratic formula. What's wrong with that? It's not a zero on the one side. Uh-huh. So we're going to have to subtract 200 from both sides. Now, we have a negative in front. We could pull out a negative 1 and then try to factor this. But think about all the factors of 500. And the chances that this are going to work out perfect are very, very low. So it probably isn't factorable. So what we're going to do instead is say, hey, the quadratic formula is the new thing we learned today. Let's just go with it. So I need somebody to unmute and let me know what A, B, and C are, please. Negative 1, 48, negative 5, 100. Thank you. 
So we got big numbers this time. We'll probably be more likely to grab a calculator for parts of this, but not the easy stuff. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We can still do negative 48 in our head, plus or minus, but yeah, we're probably going to have to grab a calculator to do 48 squared. That's not something most people have memorized. 48 squared. 2,304. Minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 500. I'm going to do some squishing over there because I wrote this part too big. All divided by 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So let's put everything under the radical into the calculator. 2304 minus, and then we had 4 parentheses, negative 1 parentheses, parentheses, negative 500. So that's the b squared minus 4ac piece that we have right there. And enter. 304. We can't tell somebody that we need to sell negative 48 plus or minus the square root of 304 divided by negative two dollars worth of stuff. That d doesn't make any sense. So we have to punch these in separate and see what that dollar amount would be. So we will need negative 48 plus the square root of 304 all divided by negative two and negative 48 minus the square root of 304, all divided by negative 2. And if we put parentheses around the top, then the calculator will know exactly what to do. It'll know, hey, you have to do all of this stuff on the top first before you divide it by negative 2. So let's punch those in. Parentheses, negative 48 plus second square root 304 oops I forget with this one I have to pop it out before I can put that in there and we need that divided by our negative 2 and I'm going to put the negative 2 in parentheses as well so here's the first amount so you could sell your CDs for $15.28 with rounding, or negative 48 minus second square root 304, pop it out, parentheses, divided by parentheses, negative 2, parentheses. $32.72. Well, that's a lot of money for CDs. So $15.28. Or $32.72. Now. The question was, what is the least amount in dollars you can charge for a CD to make a profit of $200? That means this one is the one we want. They're going to have to sell more, but at least they can sell them a little bit cheaper, $15.28. Now, in problem two, what is the least amount you can charge for each CD to make a $100 profit? So this time, we're going to put a 100 up here. So somebody unmute and tell me step one, please.
subtract. Subtract 100. Then what should we do? Find the A, B, and C. Absolutely. So I need... you in breakout rooms and I want you to sing a little song if you need to and, and get these in there and let's see if we can find the price for these CDs so hopefully somebody in your breakout room will have a calculator Remember, you can unmute so you can talk to each other. Don't forget to unmute so you can talk to each other about what you're getting. Remember, somebody in your breakout room might not have a calculator, so they might need some help.
everybody is back. Is there somebody that can tell me when they did this 2,304 minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 400, what new number they had under that radical, please? Yes, thank you. So that was kind of messy when you went to punch it in. Negative 48 plus second square root, 704. Ah, I always forget this calculator is different than my handheld. And then we would have to divide that by negative 2. So that gave us $10.73. So for the other one, we need to have negative 48 minus second square root 704 and divide that by negative 2 and $37.27. But again, the direction said, what is the least amount that you can charge? And that's going to be the $10.73. So, hopefully we noticed when we went through these that we were taking a negative and dividing it by a negative, and that gave us a positive answer. Would a negative profit have made sense in this problem? Remember what they're trying to do here. Would it make sense to get a negative profit? Well, what happens if they don't sell any CDs? They probably had to pay for these to get them done in the first place. So in this situation, it does make sense. They would lose money. Yes, they would lose money. So there are situations where we can have negatives, especially where money is concerned. And we wouldn't like that because obviously they're trying to raise funds. They don't want to find out that they're having to pay for something and they actually lose money in the process. Well, boy, oh boy, did we ever use the quadratic, sol quadratic formula to solve today. Tomorrow, the second part of our discriminant we're going to work on um, talking about what that means. But before we get to that, I don't want you to forget that the best, fastest, easiest way to find these is by factoring. So take a look at x squared plus 5x minus 24. Can somebody tell me what the factors would be for that one? Six and four. Uh, six and four, we're not going to get a five in the middle. Somebody help out. Positive eight, negative three. This is our go-to for solving quadratics because we could very easily put the zero equals. We'd know it's negative eight and three. But what we're doing now with completing the square in the quadratic formula, usually it's for quadratics we can't factor. And they end up nasty decimals. And that's what we saw in the examples that we had today. So. Let's get you started on some homework. And that's probably in the glare. That one out of there. Sorry, Amos, I didn't hear you. The test, when is it being graded? Oh, it's in. Yeah, unless people didn't, um, didn't give me their work yet, your grades are in. Oh, well, I hope I hit saved after I put those in there. I'll stop the recording. I'll stop the recording and I'll take a look and see what happened.